a prayer composed by Andy Langford and placed for our use for today on the General Board of Discipleship worship website. Almighty God, you rule all the peoples of the earth. Inspire the minds of all women and men to whom you've committed the responsibility of government and leadership in the nations of the world. Give to them the vision of truth and justice that by their counsel all nations and peoples may work together. Give to the people of our country zeal for justice and strength of forbearance that we may use our liberty in accordance with your gracious will. Forgive our shortcomings as a nation. Purify our hearts to see and love the truth. We pray these things through Jesus Christ. Amen. The first scripture lesson for today is from Deuteronomy chapter 10. It's entitled, What Does God Require of a Nation? And now, if you are God's nation, what does the Lord require of you? He requires proper reverence, including living in ways that honor him. So, love the Lord your God and serve God with everything you are and have. The stipulations, the requirements of God really are for our own good. Therefore, have a change of heart and give up your stubbornness. The Lord alone is God. Mighty, awesome, totally impartial, beyond any semblance of greed or graft. God takes up the cause of orphans and widows and has compassion for the foreigners living among you, moving to meet their needs, too. So you also must love the immigrant. Remember, you yourselves or your ancestors once were the foreigner also. Here, everything about your life should demonstrate your reverence for your God. Let your integrity bring glory to God. There is only one God and God is worthy of praise. You do know the great things God already has done. prayer from Psalm 72. Give leaders and rulers, O God, your own spirit of justice, your spirit of right to the next generation as well, that with your righteousness your people will be served and your downtrodden ones with justice. May the mountains bear prosperity for the people and the hills yield fruits of justice. May the weak and poor be defended. May their children be granted relief and oppressive persons and systems be removed. May your designs outlast the sun, the moon, enduring for all eternity. May governments become like the rain on the meadow, like showers that water the earth. 
in these days may justice flourish and welfare abound until the moon be no more. May your purposes prevail coast to coast, mountain to meadow, river to sea. May the arrogant and selfish lose their power and suffer their own humiliation. May the wealth of the world be used to meet real needs instead of selfish desires. May all rulers everywhere recognize and yield to the wisdom of your rule, bringing their best efforts in support of it. For leaders you approve, pay close attention to the needs of the poor and move quickly to relieve the helpless and the downtrodden. They have compassion on the weak and their work saves the lives of the poor. The leaders you approve, rescue those at the margins, saving them from evil and from harm. For such lives truly do matter to them as well as you. May those who lead in your way have long tenures and never be in need. May people pray earnestly on their behalf. May they be seen as the real national treasures. May our crops be abundant, enough and to spare. May orchards bear much fruit. And may the people of the land be healthy. May those who lead in your way be remembered for the blessing they were. May they be famous and never be forgotten. May all the leaders of the world look to our leaders as good examples to be followed. May all the nations revere and praise God, who brings all things into being. May God's name be praised forever and God's glory reflected throughout the world. Galatians chapter 5, Paul writes concerning the proper use of freedom. Remember, friends, to you the call came to give you freedom. Only don't make your freedom an opportunity for self-indulgence. Instead, serve one another in a loving spirit. Indeed, the whole law has been summed up in this one precept. You must love your neighbor as yourself. If you're continually wounding and preying upon one another, be aware, you can be destroyed by one another. This is what I have to say. Let your steps be guided by the Spirit. Don't go gratifying the cravings of your earthly nature. These cravings conflict with the Spirit and the Spirit with our earthly nature. 
They're contrary principles. You can't do what you wish. If you follow the guidance of the Spirit, you're not subject to the law. Now, the sins of our earthly nature, they're unmistakable. They're sins like these. Sexual immorality, impurity, indecency, idolatry, sorcery, quarrels, strife, jealousy, outbursts of passion, rivalries, dissensions, divisions, feelings of envy, drunkenness, revelry, things like these. And I warn you, as I warned you before, those who indulge in these things have no place in the kingdom of God. But the fruit produced by the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindliness, generosity, trustfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against these kinds of things, there's no law. And those who belong to Jesus, the Messiah, the Christ, already have crucified their earthly nature with its passions and cravings. So since our life is due to the Spirit, let us rule our conduct also by the Spirit. Don't let us grow vain and provoke or envy one another. A short reading from the Gospel of John, chapter 8, on true freedom. Jesus went on to say to those who had believed him, If you remain faithful to my message, you're my disciples. And you find out the truth, and the truth liberates you. We're descendants of Abraham, was their answer, and we've never been in slavery to anyone. What do you mean by saying, you'll be set free? In truth, I tell you, Jesus said, everyone who sins is a slave to sin. And a slave doesn't remain in the home always. A son does remain. If then the son sets you free, you will be free.
indeed. The last hymn today, it was written by Daniel Roberts. Um, he lived in New England. He wrote this patriotic hymn in 1876 for a centennial celebration that was taking place in Brandon, Vermont, where he was the rector at St. Thomas Episcopal Church. Originally entitled God of Our Fathers, this text was later chosen as the theme hymn for the centennial celebration of the adoption of the United States Constitution. It was published in the Protestant Episcopal Hymnal of 1892. Warren, um, George W. Warren, wrote this tune in 1894 for that centennial celebration, um, centennial celebration of the Constitution. So this appears in our hymnal as 698, God of the Ages. <laughs> Before you get on to other activities for the day, or at some time later today, sometime this weekend at least, allow me to encourage you to follow up on this short liturgy with the two links that you'll be seeing here on this side of the screen. They'll probably be partially covering me. One is to Langston Hughes' famous poem, you'll know it, and the other is to a performance of This Is My Song. Both of them are highly appropriate today. Have a happy fourth.